be louder. That oh, oh God. God, why I am not in trap and she is out of trap. She can support and nourish their children. I cannot. Ladies can do. No male, fa not father, mother. So you should know that you cannot repay your mother. Always respect so much to your mother. Father, yes. You can repay anyhow. <laughs> but no mother. So always say this. So what we can? He was observing, weeping. And in the meantime, Hunter took his bow and arrow. And he ended the heart of that pigeon and suited at once. His arrow oh, passed and began to chatter, chatter, chatter. Very restless he died. And he did. Died. And that hunter, Kuwait, oh, clapping hands and laughing, oh, I'm very lucky to have now two. And he took both and went there legs and kept it and went to her home, his home. And what he do, did you know? Cooked and ate. So we should always remind, remember this story. There she is always dancing on head. Begin your bhajan with so full energy. We don't know when death will come and we will die. So here Nagashri was telling this story. After that he called all the sons of Hiranyakashpu, Hiranyakashpu, and all his senapati, generals, at once go to here and there, cut green trees, especially very fruit wala, like mango and others. Pears, jackfruit, and kill all the Brahmins, those who do jagya, fire sacrifice. And cows, all cows who get milk by feet, by by he, jagya is done. Brahman are doing jagya by guide. It comes from cows. And by the wood of that tree, oh, jagya is done. If jagya is stopped totally, Vishnu will die. Nothing to do. In the meantime, Hiranyakashpu gave his child, his name was Prahlad. He was Vishnu Bhakta. We will explain it further. When he became five years old, he was sent to school. After some days, he returned from his school. His mother, Kayadu, decorated him and gave him the lap of his father, Hiranyakashpu. Eric Hiranyakashpu asked, What asked you? Tonga Gyana Timidam Vesha Jananjana Salakaya
First of all, I pay my humble obeisances and the lotus feet of my spiritual master, Om Vishnupad, Ashtavatar Sata Shishimad Bhakti Vedanta Shiva Bhaman Vasai Maharaj, and Om Vishnupad, Puribhaja Kachal Javalja, Ashtavatar Sata Shishimad Bhakti Vedanta Shiva Narayan Vasai Maharaj. I pay my obeisances, the lotus feet of my spiritual grandsire, Nittalila Prashtam Vishnupad, Shiva Bhakti Pragyam Keshav Vasai Maharaj, and Nittalila Prashtam Vishnupad, Shiva Bhakti Vedanta Shiva Maharaj. I pay my obeisances, all Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis who assembled here to listen Hari Katha from Guru Dev, Lotus Lips, headed by the Devi Sarnasis. Just you have heard from Srila Guru Dev, Lotus Lips, that Prahlad Maharaj went to Gurukul. Nowadays there are so many types of schools, but in ancient time, only one type of Gurukul. There is no high five school like here and they are different, different. You have to pay them so much high price, not like this. Either you are king or poor, have to go to same Gurukul. So, Prahlad Maharaj went to Gurukul of Sanda and Amarka, the son of Sukracharya. Sukracharya means who has knowledge about semen. And Sanda Sanda means bull, and Amarka means or means sun, and Amarka means that there is no sun, means darkness. So, who is bull? Bull has no knowledge. What they are doing? Eating, sleeping and mating, nothing else, and producing children. And darkness, and even do that all about Sanda. If the mother cow, they give some cow dung, you can use for cow dung patty and so many like fertilizer, etc. But bull always like a syringe going here and there, no use. So how they can teach for Allah Maharaj? They cannot give any good knowledge to any students. So somehow or other, Prahlad Maharaj went to their school and when he came back after a few, few months, then Maharaj Koyadu gave him back, dressed nicely like a prince and sent to his father. His father was sitting in the royal assembly and told, oh, sing this Prahlad Maharaj did pranam. And father affectionately took him, smelled his head and took him on his own lap. Asked, Oh my dear son, which you have learned so far in your Gurukul? Prahlad Mahi replied, What is the best thing you have learned? Then Prahlad Mahi replied, Tat sadhu manni asura barja dehi nam sada samud kutna diyama sada grahat hitra atma patam vriyamanta kupam vadam gato ya bhajima sve Oh, best among the demons. He started addressing him, Father, or Dad, although Dad, or demon, or some from D, but he is not telling, they are telling based on the demons. So I I think this is the best thing. What? Tat sadhu manne asura parja dehinam sada samud pikna diya masata graha hitva atma patam griha mandha kupam banam gato jathare masvaye. This household life, where there is a center is Krishna, this household life like a blind oil. And always anxiety, full of anxiety there. So give up that household life, which is like blind oil, and go to the forest. Which forest? Navavon means Navadidham. Or Vrindavan, Jagannathpuri. Be there and do bhajan. Then this is the best which I have learned so far. So our previous acharyas, they gave an analogy about this. So what is Andhaku? Always do they expect about this Andhaku. To remind us, just like when Buddha is present here, he is so much enthusiastic. We we'll do this, do that, chanting, remembering, hearing classes, everything. After that, when Buddha went from here, one place to another place, all became morose. Not like this. They have to be always enthusiastic. So, our Purva Chatur told, once after a time, one king went for hunting. By chance, Due to his fear, he became alone. All his armies and ministers, they go in another place, and he was another place. When he was coming back, on the way, one tiger was rolling very ferociously. And now seeing this tiger, he became very scared. <laughs> what to do? Oh my goodness, what shall I go? What I can... Escape my life. <laughs> you look here and there. No army is there. 
the ground and saw that there is a oil. He thought he put, and there is some grasses and some twigs. So if I go inside the oil, then I will not go there. So I will survive my life. And in the meantime, my Alamis and Mr. will come to search me. And tiger will go away or they will kill the tiger. So, he hand inside that oil. He about to go to the town, then he saw some so many snakes. <laughs> raising their hand. Oh my gosh. If I go down, the snake will bite me. And I will be finished. And upstairs danger. Death is waiting there in form of tiger. What shall I do? Then he noticed that two rats come from the hole of, it, of the oil, one quite white, another dark black. And they start cutting the branches. So said, oh my goodness. If I not go down, they are cutting the branches, I bound to go. If I come up, tiger is holding there, he will swallow me. If I go down, then snake will bite me. I want or not. How long I can hang? My arms will be painful. Then he saw more of her. He saw when he was jumping, hanging the, hanging the tree with two branches. Upper branch, there is a beehive. Then he was tilted and some honey drop is coming down, just passing through his nose. Seeing this, so I, saliva dropped down from his mouth. Oh, what to do? Then he could not check himself. Then he take his tongue. <laughs> oh, so tasty, so tasty. He forgot completely that death is upstairs, death is downstairs. So what is, does this mean? Why our Achar is telling this? Freeze our lifespan. And then tiger means the personification of death. And the snakes, the pool of problems. In everybody's life are full of problems. And what is the rats? One quite white, another dark black also. It means our lifespan is going to less and less. How much old you are? I'm 70 years. Means 70 years have been passed. How passed? The black rat denote night and white black rat denote day. Day and night, one day, then one week, one fortnight, one month, one year, by this way, our life is passing. So by this way, and they are cutting this team and our life is going less and less and less. So the tiger is personal mixture of death, and the snakes is problem, and red I told already, and what is the beehive? And what is the honey, the momentary happiness in this material world? If you not do bhajan, then you must be full of anxiety and your life will not be successful. Hearing this, hearing this, oh, this small boy telling spontaneously, and oh, send him school again. Then he sent him school again. Second time, when he came back, again Mother Priyadu dressed him very nicely like a prince and sent to his father. Then sing Prahlad Maharaj, Trinagasus, eyes full of tears, grab him and told, Oh my dear son Prahlad, which you have learned in the school? Then Prahlad Maharaj boldly replied, Savanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smaranam Padasevanam Archanam Vandanam Dasta Sakham Atma Nivedanam Nidipum Sarvita Vishnu Bhaktisthira Navalakkana Kriyata Kriyata Bhagavadita Dhammanyo Tadya Muttamam Savanam Kirtanam Vishnu as soon as he heard the name of the Vishnu, Dhrannakasipu looked towards Sanda and Amarka. Because they are teachers, Sanda and Amarka became very scared. Oh my goodness, King looked towards me, maybe, maybe they chop our, chop up our heads. What to do? Then they have told you, oh King, we never talk like this. Never, never. Please excuse us. He is telling himself, Savanam Kirtanam Vishnu means, you have to do Savan, means have to listen to Harikatha, being in Sadhu Sangha, which you will, have, will hear from, listen from Vaishnavas and Gurudev. You have to preach to others, this is Kirtan. Savanam Kirtanam Vishnu, Smaranam Pada Sevanam. And which you have heard from Srila Gurudev, 
all the boys of us, we have to remember time to time. Smaram, I have to pray for God and Guru Basta, so many of us talking out like Giti Gutscha. Smaram, Kirtanam, Krishna, Smaram, Pada Sevanam, Archan, to worship Niti, like this way. This Kavavila Bhakti told this. As soon as he had become very angry, and Sanavaratam never taught him. He is spontaneously telling all these things. So he became very angry and told, oh, maybe he is the Chandana, Kantavadruva Chandana Banayayam, our demon dynasty, like Sandra Forest, and he is like the handle of the axe. If you want to cut a tree, with that he could not do, he made some handle made of wood. So Vishnu want to destroy our dynasty using Prahlad like a handle. Sandamaga told, O oh king, please give another chance to us. Then they took to Prahlad again and they are teaching Prahlad what? Dollar is dollar, brighter than solar, dollar is dollar, looks cooler than lunar, dollar is dollar. If you have so much dollar, you will be a great scholar. If you have no dollar, you will be a fuller. Dollar is dollar. <laughs> and they follow. They don't think I speak for Lama Maharaj. <laughs> then when they came again, then Prahlad Maharaj told, uh, asking Hiranagasipu, that Motirana Krishna Parato Sato. Okay, now what Prahlad Maharaj is telling, now my turn is finished, others will come and present you. Hare Krishna, one travel of the request of the class in this way, okay? Then Prahlad Maharaj, called Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu Shmaranam. Then they come very furious. And as who has taught you? Hmm? Sardama told that we have not nice targaki. He is telling nice targaki to many natural. We have not told him, uh, taught him. <coughs> then he asked Prabhatma, who has taught you all these things, bad things? And then he began to pray for Krishna. Om Jnana Timarandhasya Jnana Dhanaslakya Chakshuram Malitam Dena Chasmaya Sri Gurave Nama Gurave Gaurachandraya Radhikaya Tadale Krishnaya Krishna Bhaktaya Tad Bhaktaya Namo Nama First of all, I have for my Sastani Kanavat Puspanjali my heart like flowers, thousands of times to the lotus feet of Asmadeva Parmarada to the Guru Pahar Parma. Om Vishnu Pahariya Shlodara Satsishiva Rupanu Vichari Vahariya Siddha Bhakti Dhan Pramarayan Goswami Maharaj. Secondly, I offer my pranam at the lotus feet of my Sri Rupanu Vagodya Guru Parampara. And I offer my pranam to Ananya Gandhi and to all the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis. So, we have heard how the second time, Sri uh, Prahlad Maharaj was brought before his father, Hiranyakashipu, and Hiranyakashipu, full of per paternal affection for his son, took his son in his lap. He was smelling his head, tears in his eyes. He has tears in his eyes. He's overwhelmed with love for his son. And he asked him, Oh, what is the best thing you have learned? And Prahlad Maharaj said, Stravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasevanam, Achanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atmani, Vedanam. Hmm? Now remember who Vishnu is. Vishnu is that person who killed Hirani Kashipu's brother, Hiranyaksha. Hmm? And he's saying, What is the best thing you have learned? And his son is saying, the best thing is to always hear about Vishnu. 
who killed your brother? <laughs> Chant about Vishnu, who killed your brother? Remember Vishnu? So, we can imagine how Hiranyakashipu became furious and threw the child off his lap. Where did you learn these things? How did you learn these things? Prahlad Maharaj, he said, Oh, just like a magnet is attracted to the iron automatically, so my heart automatically it goes towards the lotus feet of Sri Vishnu. So then Prahlad Maharaj told him, Matirna Krishna parato sotoba mito vipadyeta griha pratanam adanta gobe vashatam tamistram puna puna stavata chavananam. Matirna Krishna. How does it happen that someone's consciousness can become absorbed in here? Prahlad Maharaj said Krishna, Supreme Personality of Godhead. How does it happen? He said, for those who are griha pratanam, that means they've made a very strong vow to remain forever in this material world and try to enjoy their senses. For those persons, their Krishna consciousness can never be awakened, not by their own efforts, not by the efforts of other people, and not by a combination of both. It will not happen. Why? Because their senses are uncontrolled. When the senses are uncontrolled, and the consciousness of Atma, the soul, is absorbed in matter, then how can one understand Sri Krishna, who is beyond this material energy? It is quite impossible. So those whose senses are uncontrolled, they are, they are mad people. A mad person is a person who acts against their own self-interest. Their activities of sense gratification take them down, down, into darker and darker regions of life and existence. They madly engage in chewing the chew. Here, what does it mean, chewing the chew? Example is given that once there was a dog and he found one bone, but this bone was very old. It had been chewed thousands of times, there was no flavor in it. But still, he thought he could suck a little flavor out of it. So he took the bone and he was biting and trying to taste something, but he could not really feel any satisfaction at all. In the meantime, another gang of dogs came there and thought, hey, look, he's got a bone, let's get him. So then those dogs, they attacked him. And he was trying to run away with his bone, and they were biting his ears, biting his legs, biting his tail. He was in so much pain. And then finally, he couldn't hold on anymore. So he dropped the bone, and he sat down on the side of the road, and he just looked at all the other dogs. Because the next dog who picked up the bone, all the other dogs were biting him. Hmm? And he was looking now at all the other dogs biting the one who had gone. Until he dropped it, then the others, they were biting him. Hmm? And he realized that the cause of all of his pain was attachment to trying to enjoy this bone that has no juice in it. So what does it mean? And who is that dog in this analogy? <laughs> Any Badajeev conditioned soul in this world, they are trying to enjoy this world. But really there's no flavor, no satisfaction for the soul. And if someone will get something that they feel will give them some happiness, they will have to fight so many others to attain it, fight so many others to keep it, and in the end they will have to give it up. Hmm? And all they have experienced is pain and no gain. And all pain and no gain. So puna puna chavita charanatam, chewing the chew, chewing that which has already been chewed. Another meaning is that Oh, your father, your father's father, his father and his father, they all did the same thing. Son, get a good education. Mm -hmm. Then you'll be very qualified. You can be a doctor, a lawyer, accountant, whatever. And then you can have a very big house, very nice wife, very many children, and so on. And then you will grow old and retire, you'll die like this. But anyway, your life will be okay. And they tell to their children, their children tell to their children, and so on. And each generation, they're chewing the same bone that has no flavor in it. So Prahlad Maharaj, he says, Oh, how did I become Krishna conscious? Oh, it cannot happen by the effects of others, or a combination of the both, by your own endeavor. How did it happen? So Prahlad Maharaj said, Na te vidu su hi vishnum. Durasha ye bahi atamanina 
हंगा यथंगार उपगीय माना स्टेपी सचंत्रम गुरु दम्नि बाधा दोस पर्सन्स दुराशया दे हैव दुराशा विकित डिजायर्स मटेरियलिस्टिक सेल्फिश सेल्फ सेंटर्ड एम्बिशंस देन माइंड इज जस्ट फुल ऑफ दिस दोस पर्सन्स बाहिर आर्ट एंड माइंड इन बाहिर आर्ट आर्ट मींस वैल्यू और बाहिर मींस एक्सटर्नल थिंग्स they consider that there is something valuable in the external things of this world so for those persons na they will do so arta gatim he vishnu they don't know that the real valuable thing that which is really to their benefit is their relationship with god their relationship with vishnu and what do they do andaya tandaru pudiyamanas they are blind and as they become more experienced and older and more respected in society those blind persons they give advice to other blind persons and those who are giving the advice they fall into ditch and those who are following them they also fall into the ditch just as when the blind lead the blind what is that ditch every single person they be satanta urudam nibadha they are tightly bound up by the ropes of their own karmas and so they continue in the chain of birth and death Hirani Kashyapu became furious. He said, "Oh, you think that you know better than me? You think that you know uh, better than the my guru Shukacharya and also your teachers Sanda and Amarka? Do you know better than them?" Hmm? And Prahlad Maharaj he explained to him that Naisan matis taravad uru kraman gremus prashatya data pagamaya data mahiyashans padra jo bishayikam miskinchananam navrinit tajavat. Oh, unless and until one actually smears his entire body with the foot dust of a pure Vaishnava. What does that mean? That means tadvidhi pranipate na pariprashne na sevaya. to submit oneself at the lotus feet of sri guru to render services and inquire listen very submissively very carefully because the transcendental thoughts and material thoughts are not the same so in a submissive mood one should hear and accept those moods given by guru and pure vaishnavas this is this is what it means to smear oneself with the dust of the lotus feet of a vaishnava unless and until a conditioned soul follows this path then the anartas all the unwanted desires in the heart they will never disappear it doesn't matter how much karma gyan yoga or whatever process you do and this one comes to this point the anartas will not go away so then hirani kashiku he decided now if a part of your body becomes uh, full of cancer or any disease like gangrene then what you have to do you have to cut it off amputate it So in the same way even though Prahlad is like a part of my body he's my own son for the health and safety of this entire dynasty we'll have to amputate him from the dynasty so he ordered his guards come and take him away and execute him so then the guards came and they tried to kill Prahlad Maharaj in many different ways गुरुवेगोरचंद्रारिकाटदारेकृष्णायकृष्णवक्तकृतवक्तेनमोनमः Brahmachari gan ladies and gentlemen Vaishnavas Vaishnavis so good have instructed me <coughs> to just try to discuss something of the teachings of Sri Prahlad Maharaj Sri Prahlad Maharaj is described to be a gyani bhakta and his teachings are so important that Sri Lakshmi Siddhant Saraswati Thakur heard them 108 times so you could imagine how much tattva siddhanta is contained with them within them so Continuing on to the past time, Hirani Kashyapu became crazy. This boy is like a medicinal plant, even though it's not related to the body, because it's beneficial and favorable. It should be protected very carefully. But on the other hand, 
If one has a limb of one's own body that may be diseased or gangrenous, one should amputate it even though it's dear to me. Even though this boy is related to me as my son and should not be, he should be favorable to me, he is not, therefore I will kill him. So the many demons came to chop him and pierce him with tridents and swords. Pralad, interesting to note, Pralad Maharaj, he never prayed, hey Bhagawan, protect me. In fact, Pralad Maharaj, he never decided any, he never wanted anything for his own material body. Because he knew, Krishna Rako Maroke, Krishna Mare Rakeke. Krishna wants to kill you, we will save you. If Krishna wants to kill you, where are you going to hide? Because he's all pervading. And Krishna wants to save you, then who can kill you? There was his mind completely absorbed in the feet of Vishnu. He was completely fearless. He had no relationship to this body. Normally, a jnani also has that knowledge that I am not this body, I am the soul. They have Atmagyan, but Sarup Gyan they do not have. Therefore, Prahlad Maharaj is not a jnani like an ordinary Nirvashesh body. We do not believe in the names, eternal names, forms, qualities and pastimes of the Supreme Lord. Rather, Prahlad Maharaj is a jnani bhakta. He is a devotee of the Supreme Lord. Therefore, he had no attachment to this body. They tried to kill him in so many ways. Even they cast him under the feet of elephants. They put him in a pit of, poison, of poisonous snakes. They put him in the freezing cold. They cast him from the top of mountains. They threw boulders on him. Even they fed him poison. When Prahlad Maharaj, a devotee, we, everything we take, we offer the Supreme Lord. Therefore Prahlad, like Mirabai, also offered poison to Vishnu and took it like Chandramrita. And he was completely unharmed. The demons used all their powers to try to kill Prahlad. But because Prahlad was protected by the Supreme Lord, they, were, they could not do anything at all to him. So Rani Kasapu was fried, disappointed, morose. I used my whole potency against this boy, but nothing happened. It seems he is invincible. That time, Sanda and Amaka, the so-called gurus of Rani Kasapu, of Prahlad Maharaj, they said, don't worry Maharaj, we all have bad days. He is a young boy, like a green piece of bamboo. A green piece of bamboo, he can be bent this way or that way. But a stiff old stick, if you try and bend him, he just snaps in half. So he is very young, his mind is still impressionable. Don't worry, but we will take him back to the Gurukul. Our father will come. Mm. When, our Guru De when our father, Sukhachari, comes and he'll perfect his education. Therefore they try. <coughs> They tried to educate him on the materialistic values of life that is called Tribharga, Dharma, Atta and Kama. Dharma means mundane religiosity with the aim of achieving the heavenly planets. Atta means economic development and Kama means sense gratification. Therefore, by many ways they tried to instruct Prahlad, but Prahlad let it go in one ear and out the other. He never gave up the instructions or the remembrance of his own spiritual master, Sri Narad Muni. Therefore, Prahlad Maharaj was an expert at cheating. Mm -hmm. Guru Maharaj says, Krishna is such a cheater, but his devotees are even more clever. <laughs> Therefore, sometimes we have to cheat with a way that is favorable for Krishna Bhakti. Therefore, Prahlad also gave these confidential instructions. Therefore, he was not influenced at all by the materialistic education of Sandra Namaka. So, but he was acting as if he was a perfect student. Also, the devotee has all good qualities. Therefore, Sandra Namaka had so much natural affection for him. There were one day, they had to go out on some business. They asked Prahlad, like, what do you call, monitor, chief student. Prahlad will go out, you keep these boys under your control, and continue the classes. So as soon as Sanunamaka left, then the boys began restless, and began playing, as children did. Children do. Yeah. So, the boys began playing, Prahlad Maharaj said, oh, Sons of demons, don't waste time. Kolma Nachalat Pragya Dharmam Bhagavata Yaha Dorva Manusa Janma Tat Api Adruva Matadam. This human form of life is Dorva Manusa Janma. This human form of life is so rarely achieved. The Puranas describe as 8,400,000 species of life. Jalajanava Lakshanam, Stavaram Lakshadim, Siddhi Krimyo Sankaridiko, Paksinam Tasa Lakshanam, Triksa Lakshani Pasara. 8,400,000 species of life, 900,000 type of aquatic, 
Janaskavala Maksivim city, 2 million 100,000 type of plants, trees that do not move anywhere. 1 million type of bird, uh, beasts, four legged animals. 1 million 100,000 type of birds. Uh, 1 million Pakshinam Dasalakshinam. 1 million type of birds. 1 million 100,000 type of four legged beasts. So many, 1 million 300,000 type of insects, worms, bacteria. And how much good fortune we have to get this human form of life. In 12th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, it says, even the Devi gods pray to Bhagavan Vishnu, please give us the chance of the human form of life in this Kali Yuga. Because this human form of life is the only species of life in which one can practice spiritual life and achieve liberation. Therefore, the human form of life is a key to open the lock of the bondage of birth and death. The human form of life is a boat to cross the ocean of birth and death. Gurudev is like the captain of the boat. He knows the dangers, the reefs, the currents, the sharks, the crocodiles. How to cross he knows because he has crossed himself. The instructions of the scriptures are like a breeze to blow us across. And Harinam Sankatan, that is like the oars. So, Prahlad Maharaj said, Kauravam Acharat Pragya. All my dear boys, sons of demons, this human form of life is very rarely achieved. Therefore, you should practice spiritual life from the age of five years old. Five years old. Because this bhakti is so powerful, Tanabhi Adruva Matadam. Even a little bit of devotional practice that is performed, even if it's not performed perfectly, Adruva Matadam. It still gives an amazing result. The Puranas give so many stories of even people who practice devotion by accident. They get an, an eternal result. There was one story, there was one mouse. So he was living in the temple, he was very greedy. He likes to eat the ghee and the coconut oil that keeps the lamp burning. That time there was no electricity. So the mouse, he went to drink the ghee and he fell into that lamp and caught on fire and burned to death. So the mouse got a result of offering one ghee lamp to the Lord. That was himself. <laughs> so it said that mouse, in his next birth, he got the human form of life, got Sadhu Sangha and achieved perfection, just by doing bhakti by accident. One time, Puranas described there was a prostitute. So she used to chew tobacco. So tobacco burns, so I've heard. So they put lime, you know, lime, that white stuff, to it's like an alkaline to neutralize the effect of the acid. So because she was in a temple picking up customers, she could not find anyone who was selling lime in the temple. So she was scratching the bricks, taking the lime from the bricks and chewing that. So she died and went to hell, but Yamaraj, when they threw her in the pot of boiling oil, the oil went cold and Yamaraj was amazed. Why? Then he examined everything. Oh, she cleaned the temple of Vishnu. <laughs> So, where's the question of not achieving any, there's, where's the question of failure in the process of bhakti yoga? Deva Krishna himself says, Manava bhakta vinashtati. My devotee is never destroyed under any circumstances. So, then, Yatahi Purusha Saya, all my dear boys, you should worship that supreme Purush, the supreme male. Why? Who is he? Vishnu Padopasapanam. You should all approach the feet of Lord Vishnu. Yada, Esa, Sarubhutanam, Priyam. Come on, Brian. I just learned it last time. So, you should worship the Supreme Lord. Why? He is Sarubhutanam Priya. He is very dear to all Jivas. Atma Iswaram. He is the Lord of all Jivas. And He is Suritam. He is very affectionate to all of us. Devil boys, in young age, don't waste your time eating, drinking, sleeping. You should worship Vishnu. Then the boy said, Prahlad, come on. We're five years old. Now it's time for eating, drinking, and enjoying life. When we're old and our teeth have fallen out, then we can do bhajan. But youth is for enjoying. And Prahlad Maharaj said, no, that is not correct. Time is so powerful, she takes away the intelligence. You know? We cannot understand how time is taking away, day after day, year after year. You know, I just turned 40. We're 40 years gone, just like a flash. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> so time is so much powerful, like a current that sweeps away a stick in the, in the, in the river. The, the stick cannot understand how much fast he's being taken away. Therefore, if you live 100 years, 
Even in Kali Yuga, the lifespan is a hundred years. It says, what's the, who lives a hundred years these days? How many people in this room are a hundred years? Do we even know anyone who's a hundred years old? It said at the end of Kali Yuga, the lifespan will be 50 years old. You know the lifespan of the average American now? 52, if you're taking, including abortion. The lifespan of the average American is only 52 years now. Who could imagine? So lifespan is being taken away. If you live a hundred life, if you live a hundred years, twelve years, twelve hours a day you sleep, sometimes more on a bad day, fifty years you lose in sleeping. Then ten years, from nine to ten, you're just going to school, playing around, you cannot do anything. Ten to twenty, you have to waste your life going to high school and college. Therefore twenty years, fifty years minus twenty years is thirty years. And when you're in old age, yeah, when you're in old age, that time all the people you know, any old person you ask them, so much suffering, so much misery, they cannot walk, cannot digest, their senses are failing. So the last 20 years, <laughs> the last 20 years also you cannot do anything, like infirm. So how much time you have left? 10 years. So Baba, in those 10 years, you're going to get married, you're going to have kids, you're going to educate them. Then where's the time for Hari Bhajan? So Prahlad Maharaj, he gave maybe 60 verses worth of instruction. But very wonderful instructions. Prahlad Maharaj gave a full understanding of the uselessness of karma and jnana, as well as a complete deliberation on Sankhya Yoga also. If you look carefully at the instructions of Prahlad Maharaj, as well as also Guru Susvarna. So, we should not waste our time collecting money. Money, 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 brighter than sunshine, sweeter than honey. What you have, you should just be satisfied with that. No one pursues happiness, and no one pursues suffering. It comes automatically in the same way you don't endeavor for material enjoyment, because that will also come as a result of your previous activities. All my dear boys, Guru Susu Saya Lapsa. Guru, Guru Susu Saya Bhakta Sarvalabdha Vanenacha. You should begin bhakti. What's the first step of bhakti? We hear so many devotees, I'm chanting, I'm not qualified for bhakti. Because the first step of bhakti is taking shelter at the feet of Gurudev. Some people think that's like a very advanced stage. But that's the first step. Without bhakti, you can't, without the mercy of Gurudev, you cannot perform bhakti. Like a woman without a husband cannot produce a child. A person who does not have the shelter of bona fide guru cannot perform devotion. Because devotion is not a material activity. You cannot perform devotion with your material senses. You cannot see Krishna with a stool, with a bag of stool. You cannot serve Krishna who is such an ananda with his bag. They were like an iron put into fire, achieves the qualities of fire when the disciple surrenders to the feet of Guru Padapadma. The potency of Guru Dev to perform devotion enters the heart. Chaitanya, in Chaitanya Charamrita, it's very clearly described. There were the first five limbs of devotion all deal with Gurudev. There were those of us who have not taken a bona fide spiritual master, the Puranas say your next life will take birth in the lower species. So if you need any more encouragement, <laughs> I don't know what to say to you. But also taking initiation is not enough. So once you take initiation, what's your Gurudev name? I don't know. What mantra gave? I forgot. Only taking initiation is not enough. One should follow the process of initiation. Means follow the instructions of Guru. One should offer Gurudev everything one has. So does Gurudev, does he come here collecting money? What does he want? To empty our bank accounts? What is the most valuable thing that all of us possess? That is independence. Just like Bali Maharaj, Vishnu took the whole universe off him. But still, Vishnu was not happy with him. Then Bali Maharaj was thinking, I gave everything to Vishnu, but I never gave myself to Vishnu. Therefore, he is not satisfied. Then intelligence came, he said, keep your head, your third step on the back of my head. That means, what does Gurudev really want from us? Does he want our money? Does he want our real estate? No. He's not a, he's not a small timer. He's not after these tiny things. He's after us. <laughs> yes, he wants us. He wants our soul. If someone completely surrenders to Gurudev, then automatically everything he possesses is automatically offered to Gurudev. When you offer Gurudev everything, but you don't give your independence to Guru, Guru is not pleased by you. Then what is the real donation Guru wants? That is our independence. I'm going on a bit. There's one little story I want to tell. Some of us, 
Some of us wonder, how come we're not making any advancement? You would have said a great thing yesterday. Why we're not making advancement despite this process? Because we're keeping something here. What is that? The idea that I am this body and what belongs to this body is mine. There was Srila Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur who saw the story. There was one man who was going to get married. So the whole marriage party came into a boat. And they were thinking, we have to cross the Ganga. And tomorrow morning, at the auspicious time, we'll perform the marriage ceremony. So all the people that went in the boat, they began drinking, smoking ganja, haribo, not haribo, enjoying, turned up the music. <laughs> then they said to the captain, you should row extra fast, because we cannot be late. We've spent so much money to arrange this marriage. Okay. So all night, the guys were rowing, rowing, heave ho, heave ho. They lifted up the, they lifted up the sail. All night they were working, and the people in the boat were simply eating, drinking, and sleeping. In the morning they came out, what the hell's happened? We're in the same place that we started last night. What's happening? Then the captain was confused, we are not lazy fellows. All night we are working, see the sweat, see the blisters on the hand. So there was argument going on. They could not understand why they had not progressed. Then there was one man on the bank. Oh, Captain, did you lift the anchor? <laughs> we did not lift the anchor. They were all night working hard, but no progress. So what is the anchor? That is our independence. Therefore, the nine limbs of devotion, no. First surrender, then perform the nine limbs of devotion. First surrender to Gurudev, then here. First surrender to Gurudev, then chant. First surrender to Gurudev, then remember. Otherwise, you cannot. So Prahlad Maharaj gave these valuable instructions. And what will Guru instruct you on? Sadhanam Sadhu Bhaktanam. The Guru will instruct you on Vaishnav Sangha, how to perform Vaishnav Sangha, Vaishnav Sadhacha. Then the Guru will empower you how to properly associate with other Vaishnavas, your god brothers and your god sisters. In the association of Vaishnavas, you will learn Iswara Aradhananacha, the process of devotion. So Prahlad Maharaj's instructions really like a, a valuable gem. If we could take even one drop in our life, we would be successful. So, Prahlad gave these wonderful instructions. Sandra and Amaka, they came, they saw. These old boys had become devotees. They became fried. They went to Hirani Kasipu. We cannot control Prahlad. He is beyond our control. I think he's controlled by the Supreme Controller. We cannot do anything. So all the boys said, Prahlad, what can we do? How do we begin this process? Bhakti begins with Harinam. So all the demons began chanting. Come on. Hare Krishna, 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 Hare I tried, to punish, I tried to punish you before, and I didn't finish my job, but now I'm going to thoroughly punish you. Do you know who I am? Huh? Do you know? Do all of you know who I am? Huh? I'm Hiranya Kashipu. I am. Here we go again. <laughs> when my eyebrows move, all the demigods in the heavenly planets, they run in fear from me. <laughs> so, it's now the final moment, my dear Prahlad. You think you're so powerful. I saw how you have this puffed up mood, that you have so much power. So let me ask you a question, Prahlad. Where do you think you get your power from, huh? Oh, Father, 
The place I get my power is the same place you get your power from. And it's not Red Bull. <laughs> What are you talking about, power? The all-pervading Lord, who is inside and outside everything. He is controlling, maintaining, and protecting everyone, Father. Even you. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Your all-pervading Lord, who protects you. I'm going to do a nice little test here, okay? Let me ask you a question. If your Lord is all-pervading and He's going to come and protect you, so let me ask you, is He over here? Is He also in this pillar over here? You say He's all-pervading? Yes, look. Vishnu's everywhere. <laughs> oh. All right. I tell you, Father, He is also in that pillar. Okay. You say he's in that pillar? <laughs> All right. <laughs> With my powerful fist, which can terrorize the universe, I'm going to smash this pillar and let's see your protector come and protect you, huh? <laughs> ah! <laughs>
Só...
from Srila Gurudev, first or second, Hari Nam or Diksha initiation. The initiations will be held at uh, day after tomorrow at 8 o'clock, 8.30. Uh, those who want to take initiation have to come to Srila Gurudev's house where he's staying, the house of uh, uh, Arun Varma. And uh, then one they... 1-1-7-2-5 tell our crest. Double one seven two five tell our crest. Only who will take initiation, they will come, not others. Yes. Dear so, sister and brothers. So the devotees who desire to have initiation, <clears throat> they have to have a recommendation from a senior devotee.